Welcome to the Art of Brewing. To help us tell the story of beer, we've partnered with one of Ontario's most successful, award-winning local breweries, Cool Beer. For the next little while, we invite you to join us for an insider exploration of the history of beer, how it's brewed, aged, packaged, and best enjoyed. To give us a better understanding of the art of beer, we're pleased to welcome the pros at Cool Brewery, Adrian, Vincent, Kevin, and Andrew, who will share their beer knowledge, experience, and stories with us. Let's begin at the beginning. What is beer? Beer is nature's gift, an alcohol-based beverage brewed mainly from malted barley, hops, yeast, and water, along with other natural ingredients to create different beer styles. Benjamin Franklin has been famously misquoted as saying that beer is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. Beer is one of the oldest beverages in the world. Even 7,000 years ago, ancient Egyptians were drinking beer. 4,000 years ago in Babylon, it was a tradition that a new groom would be gifted with a month's worth of beer from his father-in-law. Thus, the origins of the name Honey Month, which soon became something we appropriately call the Honeymoon. Introduced in Canada by European settlers in the 1600s, beer continues to be the most popular alcohol-based drink in our fair country. Canadian craft beers tend to reflect the history and culture of different regions across Canada. Atlantic provinces tend to prefer British beer styles, while Quebecers prefer Belgian styles, and Ontarians tend towards German and East American styles. West Coasters prefer more organic and fruity style beers. You may be surprised to learn there are only two basic categories of beer, ales and lagers. Ale is the oldest type of beer and originates from the German word alt, meaning old or aged. The word lager comes from the German word lagerin, which means to store. Ales traditionally use top fermenting yeasts, which allow quicker fermentation period between seven and eight days. Ales tend to be more robust beers with flowery and fruity aromas. As you can see from this chart, there are many varieties of ale styles. Lagers traditionally use bottom fermenting yeasts, which allow for other flavors to pull through, such as hops. Lagers tend to be lighter tasting, crisp, smooth, and mellow, and are generally served around three to seven degrees Celsius. So now we know beers are either ales or lagers with a full range of styles to choose from. But let's back up a little and find out just how beer is made. All great beers, like all great stories, have a beginning, a middle, and an end. To help us tell the beer story, let's meet Adrian, Cool's brewmaster. Trained in Germany, Adrian has over 20 years of brewing experience and a master's in chemistry. He has also chaired the Ontario Craft Brewers Association and is very active as an advisor to collegiate brewing and brewery management programs. Uh, here we are at the uh, mill over at Cool Beer. Uh, the reason that we use a mill on the uh, grain, the barley, by crushing the barley in a controlled manner, it allows us to expose the inside of the kernel to water. And then by that, we can extract the maximum amount of sugars from the grain, which then the yeast can use to ferment and make alcohol and all the other good flavors that come out of it. So it's a very key component. It's a very special mill that we have here. It allows us to very precisely control the amount of crushing that we do. And that is optimal for the uh, extraction. We source our grain, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, from around the world. Anywhere from uh, the UK, Canada, of course. Canada is one of the largest producers of uh, malted barley, as well as Germany. So depending on the styles of beer that we're gonna be making, we select from the most appropriate source country. One of the things that also I wanted to mention here regarding the grains as well, is that we can actually adjust color and flavor as well, selectively based on the malt. For example, if you're gonna be making a stout or a porter, you want to use a black malt like this. The British make amazing black malts. Um, we could also use a lot of the German malts for traditional lagers. This is a Munich malt. And then often as the case in Canada for our uh, good old home Canadian lagers that we make, Canadian churros, an absolutely amazing malt as well. So we can adjust flavor and color just by selecting for the right malt. We've historically used malted barley. Barley was used first because it actually has a husk and it's uh, marvelous because when you crush it and get it ready for usage in, in, in a 
brew, it actually acts like its own coffee filter, if you will. So it allows you to separate all the good sugars that we want and the vitamins from the grain and it has its own filter. There are varieties of different kinds of grains that are available for the brewer. Different kinds of uh, malt. Uh, malt basically just means a germinated or sprouted grain. Kuhl's' go-to brewer is Vincent, who is a graduate of the University of Sutherland's British Brewing Technology course. Vincent also has working experience with BrewLab, one of England's most respected brewing laboratories. An auger brings in the crushed grain from the mill into what's called the mash tun. The grain is hydrated. What we got now is called a mash. The mash really sets the tone for the brew. The optimal temperatures for a mash is between 60 and 70 degrees C. The lower end creates more fermentable sugars, resulting in a drier, cleaner beer, typical of lagers. Uh, 65 degrees and up, you get more unfermentable sugars, which create a nice sweetness in the beer and a more body, which is typical for ales. This is the optimal temperature for a conversion of the starches into sugars. The lower temperature tends to create more fermentable sugars, which results in a lighter, cleaner beer, often uh, typical of lagers. Higher temperatures between 65 and 70 degrees is more unfermentable sugars, which creates more sweetness in the beer and a better body, typical of most ales. We're gonna let this rest for about 45 minutes to an hour, and all the starches will convert into sugars and then we'll be ready to transfer that over into our louder time. Once the grain has been hydrated, we're gonna raise it to temperatures between 60 and 70 degrees C. This beautiful brew house we picked up in Germany. It was built in the mid 50s. It's copper throughout. It's not stainless inside and clad with copper. Trace amounts of copper in the beer is actually beneficial. Once the liquid runs through the grain, this is called the first runnings. This is the sweetest concentrated part of the runoff. After most of the sugary liquid, or first runnings, has run to the kettle, there's still a lot of sugar remaining in the grain. We're gonna rain down hot water over top of that to extract that, because we need the most amount of sugar to create alcohol in the final product. Okay. Now that we know what goes into beer and how it's brewed, let's catch up with Adrian, who will tell us all about fermentation, aging, and filtration. Vince is just finishing up the brew. The boil is done. He's sending the wort through the heat exchanger. From the heat exchanger, we go to these large tanks, which we call fermenters. In particular, these are cylindroconical fermenters. You can see that they are cone-shaped. Very important for us because it allows us to collect the yeast to use on next brews. We make two styles of beer, as we were talking about earlier. There's ales and lagers. Ales ferment at a higher temperature, lagers ferment at a colder temperature. Because it's a colder temperature, they actually take more time to ferment. So lagers take anywhere between a week to two weeks, where ales can be done in about five days almost. For the ales, we can actually just ferment and filter directly from here, but for the lagers, we typically will transfer this to an aging tank. Right here, this bad boy holds about 35,000 bottles of beer. We look and pan over to those tanks, multiply that by three. You're almost looking at 100,000 bottles of beer in those tanks. This is our DE filter. This allows us to remove yeast and other turbid products that are in the beer so that we actually get a nice, bright glass full of beer. In the older days, people didn't need to filter. They just let it age for as much as they could. And they also tended to drink beer that was more cloudy in those days. Why do we filter beer? Well, we want to make sure that there's no leftover yeast. Make sure that it's nice and polished for people to drink. People don't want to drink a soupy beer. They'd rather have a nice, bright beer. Basically, this filter allows us to filter almost 30 hectoliters of beer an hour. So that's almost like 2,000 beers an hour. So it's really, really fast. Uh, and we go from one of these tanks to one of these tanks, which is a bright beer tank, which the word bright means finished beer when you're talking to a brewer. This particular bright beer tank holds roughly 40,000 beers in it by the time you factor that in. Getting thirsty, now comes the fun part. Putting cool beer into cans, bottles, and kegs. Once again, Adrian will be our tour guide. This is our packaging area, and we do everything from large size kegs. These are 58.6 liters. We also do 20 liter kegs and 30 liter kegs. The way the machine works, we have three different stations. First station here 
is actually a cleaner, cleans it on the inside, gets rid of any kind of uh, contamination that might be in there. The second step is to sanitize that freshly cleaned keg. Um, that guarantees that we have a really clean, long shelf life for each of these kegs. The third station on this side is where we actually fill the beer inside the keg. That process is really quick. It takes only about 45 seconds to fill a 58 liter keg. So it's very, very quick. From there, it goes on, gets washed, flipped over, date coated, and sent to the back of the fridge for the guys to load up the next day. So here we are. We know what goes into making beer, how it is brewed, aged, and filtered. And we know how it gets into cans, bottles, and kegs. The last nice to know is what's happening in the beer industry today. Beer is the third most popular beverage in the world behind tea and water. In Canada, beer is taxed at a rate of 52%. We're the third highest taxed nation in the world with regards to alcoholic beverages, especially beer. Now, who drinks beer in Canada? Ontario accounts for about 35% of all the beer sold in the nation. Next to that would be Quebec, followed by British Columbia and Alberta that account for about 15% of all the beer sold in the country. A lot of the beer that's sold in the western provinces of British Columbia and Alberta is in cans. Cans because it's a leisure type of a province that people prefer cans over bottles to go hiking with, go boating with, so they don't have to take the glass containers. 80% of all the beer that we consume is done at home. We buy it from the beer store, the LCBO, and we take it home and we consume it with our family and our friends. The other 20% of the beer that's consumed in Ontario is done in pubs and restaurants. Not licensed establishments where we go to enjoy a pint with family and friends again, and about 80% uh, of that 20% that we consume in the pubs is done in draft beer. Domestic beer accounts for about 90% of all the purchases across Canada. Imports account for about 10%. Of that domestic component that is 90%, there's a rising market segment called craft beer or regional breweries, of which Cool Brewery participates in, and across North America, not just in Canada, that is a rising segment that the majority of brewers, not only in North America, but from around the world, are trying to develop new and interesting products and unique bottles for the development of that market segment. With regards to pricing in the beer market, we take a look at the market in four basic segments. We have the value segment, we have the domestic segment, we have a premium domestic segment, and then what we call the imports. There are two very interesting segments in the market that are growing the value segment, under $35, and the imported or the super premium prices, over $40. With regards to distribution and retailing of beer in Ontario, we have two major retailers in the province. One is the beer store, the other is the LCBO. The beer store accounts for 80% of all the beer purchases in the province, while the LCBO accounts for 20% of all those purchases. Interesting at the LCBO, they do about 170 million transactions per year. At the beer store, the average customer goes in and visits that beer store at least five times per week. At the beer store, 80% of all that beer is sold between Thursday at noon and Sunday at noon. These are the newest addition to the cool product line. They're about three liters. Really convenient because they fit in your fridge. And the machine that we use to fill these is right over here. This is an incredible little piece of machinery. Kegs go in on this side, cleaned and sanitized, fed into this feeder here. 
Beer comes into this particular reservoir. We programmed it so that it fills the right levels, right carbonation in a very clean way. Uh, they then make their way through the seamer and they're capped and then basically sent over here for final confirmation of weight, date coded, and they're ready to ship to the fridge as well for next day delivery. This is our bottling line. It comes in basically two streams. So the bottles come in on this side on a skid, uh, usually about eight levels high. And this machine is called a depalletizer and it basically removes one level of bottles at a time uh, as delicately as possible so that they're ready to be filled. Bottles are then conveyed over to this machine, a rinser sanitizer. So what it does is it removes any kind of a dust that would be in there, but it also sanitizes the bottles uh, to maintain a, a really good environment for the beer so it can have as much shelf life as possible. From there, the bottles are then brought over to the filling station, which is right over here. This machine works by what's called counter pressure. So there's beer inside the bowl, and it's maintained at a high pressure. And then the bottles are also filled at that same high pressure. And what that does is it makes sure that the carbon dioxide or CO2 in the beer is the exact same level as what you would want to taste. Once the bottles are filled, they get capped. This is a six head capper. Uh, the machine works quite quickly. It does almost 84 cases of beer in about 20 minutes, so it's quite quick. We have other machines that make sure that the uh, crowns are on snug. We have a really nice labeling machine. It's an amazing machine because it allows us to put on three labels onto a bottle at once. We can do a front label, a back label, and a neck label. We also do run pre-printed glass, like our Stonewall bottles uh, that you'll see later on. So once the bottles are labeled, we then go to this machine here, which is a uh, drop packer. So what that means is we take the bottles, they come in a single stream, we split them into a stream of four. You can either drop into four packs, six packs, or two fours.
Cool Brewery is an award-winning brewery that makes all-natural beers affordable for the everyday beer drinker. We also try to keep ourselves focused on giving what the beer drinker wants, and that's unique packaging. This is where we begin. We take our namesake beer, Cool, and we put it into a mini keg. It's got nine bottles of beer in it. You can put your name on it. It's got a nice, easy to carry handle, and you can put it in your fridge. Now, if you like light beer, we've got a light beer called Stonewall Light, and it too is also in a unique packaging. It's in a 275 mil clear painted label bottle, nice and slim, easy to drink, long neck. For those people who like canned beer, we also put Stonewall Light into a nice slim can, put more in your coolers, chills down faster, and pours really nicely, easy to drink. Two ways you can get your light beer. Another beer that we brew is really unique to the marketplace. It's called Buzz, and it's a hemp beer. We use BC hemp, and it's the only hemp beer that's on the marketplace. Again, it's nice, a nice slim can. You can get more in your cooler, easy to drink, cools down nice and fast. We make lots of beers at Cool Brewery. Those are some of the most unique packaging that we have. If you're looking for a bigger format of the Cool Stonewall Light or Millennium Buzz, go onto our website, coolbeer.com, click on the home delivery, and get a keg for your house, for your bar, or whatnot. We offer a 20 liter and a 58.6 liter, 177 beers. And in a 20 liter, just over two and a half cases of beer. Thank you, Kevin, Adrian, Vincent, and Cool Beer. And most especially, thanks to our viewers. We hope this video has helped you to better understand the art of brewing. Cheers to one and all.